going, friends? It is so good to be with you all today. If you have ever wanted to make garments that fit and flatter a more mature figure, then stay tuned for today's show because you are going to get a ton of good information and you're going to love what you see today. I've got a great, great guest for you. So welcome to the Let's Go Sew Live show with Joanne Banco, where sewing enthusiasts gather to be inspired and learn to make the most of their machines. And in today's case, you're going to learn to make the most of garment sewing, like I said, for maybe a little bit more um, mature figure. If you've struggled with working with commercial patterns and, you know, found they're just, they're just not you <laughs> and you have to do a lot of alterations in order to make them fit. I mean, most any pattern can be chopped up, spread, slashed, overlapped, whatever you need to do to make it work. But wouldn't it be great to find a pattern line that is full of great fashion great patterns that that you know fit together and will fill out your wardrobe and are easy to use and will fit you without a whole lot of frustration. Give me a hey yeah <laughs> if that's if that's something that you're looking for. So, I am so glad to see you all today. It is a special Saturday edition of the Tea and Tutorial show. Usually this is broadcast on a Friday, but I'm trying out a few Saturdays. I'd um, love to know in the chat if uh, Saturday uh, is a good day for you, um, especially I know when you know the summer starts waning a little bit and we're a little bit more uh, uh, inside the house. Um, maybe Saturdays work, work good for you, so let me know. I'm going to say hi to just a few people here. I see Cindy. Cindy says she just got the double meeting title. Yes, tea and tutorials. So I don't know if you're sipping any tea with me today, but I always like to tell you what I'm drinking. First of all, I'm drinking my tea out of this gorgeous uh, teacup that was given to me for my last birthday by my dear friend, Kim. So Kim, if you're watching, thank you very much. I love my cup and I'm going to enjoy sipping tea from it today. So I am drinking today Mandarin Orange Spice. And I love this tea. This is one of my absolute favorite, um, especially when I want something um, hot. I, I just, I love the, I, I love the smell of this almost more than I love the flavor. So it just has that beautiful, beautiful orange, spicy, spicy smell. And I really like um, just, you know, even chilling it. So I've got a whole container made today. I'm, it's a little cool here today. So it's only around 70 so I woke up, you know, just a little, wanted a little warm up and I'm um, drinking some warm tea today, but I might want some, uh, something cold later. So Jenny, good day for you. Great. Good to see you, Jenny. Glad to have you here. Carla, Carla says, hi, Saturday's a good day for you. Very good. Debbie's here from Southwest Georgia. Oh, okay, Debbie. Yeah, I didn't think about football, but um Hopefully you'll be able to hang on for a while and then uh, maybe um, come back and, and catch the replay. <laughs> Connie says that tea sounds delicious. Let me know in the chat what you're drinking today. Hey, Graham, good to see you from Ontario. You usually have um, pretty much the same weather that we have here in, in uh, Northeast Ohio. So I don't know if you're right around that uh, 70, 70 degree temperature today. And Emily's here from Nevada. Hey, Emily. Patty says Saturday is a good day for her. She's in North Carolina. Very nice. And let's see, we've got um, Ginny says, oh, first time here. Ginny, so glad to have you here. Oh, my, you're going to have a lot of fun and hopefully you'll be back for many, many, many shows in the future. Carol is up in Michigan. And Ann says either Friday or Saturday. OK, that's good. And Lynn, hey, Lynn, let's see Lynn here. Lynn says um, her favorite tea is orange and um, cinnamon spice. I bet it's very similar to this um, Celestial Seasonings one. I bet it's it's pretty pretty close. <laughs> and hey, Ann, glad to have you here. I don't know where you're at exactly. I can guess maybe, but uh, at over 100 degrees, yikes. Ooh. Hey, Susanna from Michigan. Oh, 
so good. So good to have all of you here. Um, uh, Dennis. Hey, Dennis. I bet it's somebody. It's uh, Miss Mrs. Perkins then. Hey, <laughs> good to have you here today. And Sanders here from uh, Connecticut. Hey, good to have you here, Sandra. All right. And we'll just take one more here. Um, Mary from Long Island says uh, Saturday is good. Great. Oh, I'm so glad to have all you here today. I would love to um, say hello to every single one of you. So consider yourselves said hello to. <laughs> it's really, really nice to have everybody here. So let's let me give you just a little bit of an overview again of what we're going to talk about today. Um, my guest is Diane Scarponi from Style Falcon. I'm going to bring her up in just a minute. She's waiting in the wings here, but we're going to talk a little bit about her pattern line. I'd love to know in the chat how many of you uh, were here for the last show that I did uh, live with Diane. It's been a few months. Maybe she can remind me when I bring her bring her on uh, how long ago it was. But we did a, a a you know whole thing on style falcon patterns. I will link it up that away <laughs> so that you can find that show and uh, either rewatch it or watch it for the first time if you haven't seen it before. So we're going to do a little bit of an overview of style falcon patterns, but we're going to focus today. It's tea and tutorials. So we're going to be focusing on a T-top, and it is uh, Diane's latest pattern, and it, it is a beauty. We're going to talk about um, her availability of paper patterns, which is new. We're going to, like I said, talk about the T-top. It's called the Sublime Shell, but I'm giving it the T-top, you know, a little, little stretch there with the words. Uh, fabric choices for this particular top we're going to cover. Um, we're going to cover bindings and facings, and we're going to um, ask you to chime in on which you like best. So hang on for that question when we get there. And Diane is also going to show us how she makes that pretty little loop at the back of the neck um, for the closure. So that you're going to see this top has no buttons and buttonholes, uh, no zippers, no nothing tricky. So it's very, very user friendly. All right. Without further ado, let me go ahead and bring up um, Diane's picture here so that you can see who's coming on. And again, this is the um, sublime shell that we're going to be kind of focusing on today with tips and tricks for sewing a pretty tea top. So let's say welcome to Diane. Hey, Diane. Hey, Joanne. It's Great to see so you. Great to see so many familiar names in the chat. Thanks Every, for having me on again. Everybody is here just waiting, waiting, waiting to hear from you. And I'd love to know in the chat again how many of you have uh, have watched the previous show that I did with Diane or you're already a Diane fan, <laughs> a Style Falcon fan. It's, let me know if you have worked with any of Diane's patterns. I would love to know. Everybody's saying hi to you, Diane. Hey. Hi, everyone. Awesome Good to day. see you all. Have you here today? And um, Diane Peterson, she says she saw the, the last show. So that's good. Um, uh, Professora says she saw the last. I'm, I'm assuming she, I might be, I might be wrong on that. So forgive me if I'm wrong on that. Or uh, Professora, please let me know if I'm correct on that. Um, but that was a good, that was a really, really good show. Anne did not see it. So Anne, you are in for a treat today. So, Diane, let's just start right off by talking just a little bit about um, the Style Falcon uh, pattern line. So let me go ahead and um, bring up a, a picture of that. And there we are. There you are. Uh, visionary. I love that. Visionary and creative force behind Style Falcon. And I think you 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 have that specifically on your website because... You do have a team, don't you, that works a lot with you? That's right. That's right. I've I've been a, a you know a home sewer you know, most of my life. I learned uh, at the knee of my grandmother and great aunt, like I'm sure a lot of you. In addition to home ec class and junior high and, and other things, um, and I I do I did create this this pattern line for mature figures. I I felt really strongly that there was a a place in the world for us. You can make, as you mentioned, all the adjustments in the world that you want to a commercial pattern, but the truth is your body just changes quite a bit. 
as you get older. Yeah. And almost all fashion that you see in the stores and almost all sewing patterns are based on this mature, um, this um, youthful hourglass figure. So this, the figure that you're, the stereotypical figure that has a, a proportion like this. The and figure that some of us had in our high school pictures, maybe. I was just going to say, <laughs> yeah. say that. That yeah. is maybe a figure you had once upon a time, um, or, maybe, or maybe not. Um, but whether you did or you didn't, as you get older, it's less likely that you will. That's, that's yeah. absolutely true. And even if you haven't had like a lot of real, um, you know, measurement changes, things shift into different places. <laughs> you're just, you're, I mean, you're not, the, generally speaking, if you're over a certain age, you're not even the same height that you used to be at one time, you know, let alone some of those other, other proportions. So uh, we already got a uh, one great question here. So let me, mm -hmm. let me, oh, gravity. Yeah. Connie, you gravity, got it. Yeah. gravity, Grav gravity, <laughs> menopause, childbirth, breastfeeding. Yep. Uh, many of us have health issues. Maybe the medications we're on other, lots of things can, can happen. Lots of things can happen. And it's just part of the natural rhythm of life. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm a big believer in living in your own skin and and it's and and enjoying enjoying life and enjoying what you wear and when you're working whether it's a sewing pattern or it's a clothing item you buy in the store if it doesn't fit the problem is is the garment it's not you because you're Absolutely. awesome you're, you're perfect, perfect. <laughs> you are you. yes exactly exactly that is absolutely right yep lynn says that's so right um carla says she's shorter than she used to be yeah um, but Cindy's got a great question. So let's let's go right into that from the very beginning here. Um, sure. Where did Style Falcon come from, Diane? Sure. I, I wrote a little blog on it. If you go to my website, which is stylefalcon.net, you can read more about it. But um, the, the gist of it is I when I was thinking of starting this, this, this line, I had uh, an idea in mind for a for a company name. And I went to register the trademark and the lawyer I was working with. He was, she's a trademark attorney. And he said, well, there's something very similar out there already. So you probably shouldn't use it. Um, that there's a real danger that you could be a trademark infringement or that it would not be approved. And all of my, all my patterns are copyrighted and, and all, and everything is trademarked as it needs to be. Mm -hmm. Right. Absolutely. So, yeah. It's very important. So um, I said, okay, well now I need a new name. So I spent a lot of time kicking around ideas and I was sitting out in my backyard and it was, it was during the pandemic when we were all, doing the best we could at home for the most part. And there was this, um, there was this hawk that was coming down all the time and having a little buffet in my backyard with <laughs> the songbirds said to say, oh my. you know, it's nature. Nature is red in tooth and claws, they say. And, um, and I just started thinking about these, these birds and how beautiful and powerful they are. And I also I was reading this book by um, the British naturalist writer, Helen MacDonald. She wrote a beautiful book called H's for Hawk about her efforts to train a, a hawk for hunting. And one of the points that she makes in the, in the book is that the female hawk is always stronger and usually a better hunter and just a larger and more impressive bird than the male hawk. And so most of the hunting hawks that you see are, are females. So I started thinking about that. I started thinking about these beautiful birds and and, uh, and, and, you know, and women and how we relate to that. And, and then I, when I did a little more research, I found that there were all these really nasty negative connotations between women and birds. You know, you're an old hen, you're a harpy, all these kinds of things we've heard of. And, and I thought that's no good. Like, I don't like that. I want to turn that on its head. I want to make it about beauty and power. And that's how I came up with the name Style Felt. That is great. I love it. I, you know, I, again, when I think of, uh, a falcon. I definitely think of a thing of beauty, um, mm -hmm. and 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 grace, and you know the graceful <laughs> way. Yeah, that is so cute. This is Mabel. That was the the name of the of the hawk in Helen Macdonald's book H is for Hawk. And and this is and she's a peregrine falcon, and okay. she's the mascot for style falcon. Yeah. So. Well, you know the other thing, and and I only know this because we had a story um, in the Cleveland area that was that was pretty popular for a while, and that was. There was um, a pair of uh, peregrine falcons that had uh, made a nest on a famous building mm -hmm. in, 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 in our downtown area. And so you even think about that. What does that say? It's, it says um, strength, uh, versatility, uh, you know, and we could go on and on and on. Oh, but yeah. I think 
one of the things that, that in my mind as a sewing enthusiast, I say this all the time and I think about this a lot when I'm with other sewing enthusiasts, we're, we're a special, a special, let's say brood, <laughs> brood of birds. Yeah. We're a special <laughs> breed, <laughs> male or female, obviously, yeah. but we, yeah. we have, there's, you know, I don't know if anybody's really studied the creative mind really well, but to have a creative mind and especially for, for sewing and for sewing garments, I'd love to hear everybody else's thoughts on this. We do something that almost nobody, almost nobody does. We take nothing and we turn it into something with the hope that it's going to look good on a three-dimensional body and suit us when we're done. And, you know, you think about it. I mean, you, if somebody's a great chef and they make a beautiful, or they, they're a baker and they make a beautiful cake and, and all that, it's still, it doesn't have to fit anybody. It doesn't have to be worn around any anywhere. So the whole process of creating garments, I mean, sewing in general, but creating garments in particular, I think takes a very, very, very special uh, creative ability. So give me a yes, yes in the chat if you if you agree the same thing. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. But yeah, um, the, the name itself says a lot. But let's talk a little bit more um, as you started about the whole uh, the whole way that style falcon patterns are different. Sure. Um, so I think the the idea behind the mature figure is is to adapt to all these you know body changes that many of us are probably really really familiar with at this point, um, and and to to build this pattern line, I started with a fit model who's sixty, and she's she's fit and and cool and and a real free spirit type of a person, and but she had this this uh, this size and body type that that was that was really kind of in the middle of the range. There was a study that was done of women's uh, measurements for women 55 plus in the United States. And, and there's this big chart that shows all these measurements and, and she's exactly in the midpoint of that. So I was really delighted to work with her because I figured if I could build my line off of her shape and then I can make a few sizes larger and a few sizes smaller like you do, I would cover, I wouldn't cover everybody, sad to say, but I would cover quite a lot of people. And, and I would be able to, to get something out there and to get people to enjoy it and to learn. And then um, I do hope to extend the size range and also to do a line for petite someday uh, to, serve, to serve that audience as well. Oh, that, that, sounds, that sounds good because that is another whole, another whole niche. Let, how about sizing? Let's, let's talk about sizing um, sure. for a minute because I got, I got some images here to show. And then we'll talk about the fact that you've, you've got choices for both digital and paper patterns. That's another whole... Another whole topic, but let's let's stay on the topic of sizing for just a minute here. Yeah, sure. So so the when you when you build a pattern line, as I mentioned, my fit look model, whose name is Meg Green, um, she's in the middle, so she's size F. I didn't use the typical numerical sizes like you're familiar with because they have no relation to that. Like whatever you're getting in the store, that number that you see on the tag doesn't have any relation to these for sizes at all. Um, so I, I I built it out that way, and the idea was to go from uh, you know, you have your bust, your waist, and and your hip measurement, and and to provide a range with within that. Again, it, it doesn't it doesn't cover everybody, but it covers quite a lot of people. So if you're you know, and it's designed for a bust of a, a C to D cup, you can make that larger or smaller. The the bust point, I'm just going to hold up. This is one of the pattern pieces. Okay. Is 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 always marked. I believe it's really important to always mark these landmarks on a pattern. So the bust, waist, and hip is always marked. I don't know how you fit something otherwise. Exactly. Um, the bus point is always is, is, is marked here. And you can see that if I was to hold up, say, uh, some other pattern that, come, that you might be familiar with, the bus point would be quite a bit higher. This is I, we lowered the bus point because that's that tends to be where things go over time. I'm sure a lot of us on this, <laughs> a lot of us here have had that experience. Um, another thing that's uh, just to show you, this is the back piece, again, for the sublime shell, which we are going to talk about. In a okay. minute, um, but most pattern companies will have a have a back that is straight up and down. But but hardly any of us have a back that's shaped like that. And if we if we do, maybe we're a ballet dancer or something in a former life. But yep. there's a subtle curving here in the back, and that accommodates many of us as we get older. Our shoulders tend to go forward, or we we develop um, a little bit of a posture 
change from when we were young. Mm -hmm. And and that is really important because if, if your if your garment doesn't fit properly in the back, it's not going to fit properly in the front either. Now well, nobody people don't tend to care too much about what they look like from the back, but it's really important. <laughs> so and it also that, makes it there, you're probably in good shape in the front too. Yeah, it also makes it customizable too because if you don't have that, if you're just cut on the fold and it's straight and it's flat you have no ability to manipulate that seam. So I, is that is that something that's typical in most of your patterns? Do they have a, a center back seam if yeah. they're a little more fitted? My patterns always have a center back seam, regardless of whether it's a t-shirt or a jacket or um, a top like this one. Got it. Um, and, and and you're right, you can, you could e even make this curve a little deeper if you wanted to, or you can make it more shallow. Hold on a second, there's something else I'll show you. Okay. And you know what? Um, Janice says, because I, I got a few great comments here. I'll bring yeah. up when we have a break, but um, Janice says your sizing makes sense. And I'm trying to find the one. Um, Vanessa says, oh, wait, where do I find that measurements chart? <laughs> that yeah. is on the website. So let me go ahead. I'll bring that website back up again. All You'll right, see an yeah. item that's called help me find my size. And if, if you don't see it, but it, it does cover a bust from 34 to 48 inches. Um, high bust is, is sort of this area above, and that's three inches less than the full bust, um, you know, depending on your bust situation, your chest situation. Um, the waist is 33 to 47 inches, which is very similar to the bust measurement. And this is something else that happens as we get older, we tend to lose waist definition. Yeah. And you can weigh the same that you weighed. Exactly. It's not about weight. Yeah. It is about just distribution of, of flesh on your body as you get older. Um, particularly after menopause, many of us have had this experience. Well, yeah, um, the funny thing is it can happen like, cause I, I know I've experienced that. I've, I've never been long wasted, but I always had, you know, very specific waist. And even though I'm about the same size that I was 20 years ago, uh, my waist is not in the same place. It's mm -hmm. definitely not in the same, it's not the same size and it's not in the same same place. So, and it, it can happen pretty, pretty quick. Like, yep. Yeah. Lennis has yeah. another good point here. She says, it's not about weight. It's about shape. Yeah, that's right. Absolutely. And Cindy, says, Cindy, um, you know, <laughs> Cindy appreciates that extra, extra shaping in the back. Yep. Sure. Um, Renee says great information. She likes the details in your patterns. Yep. Oh, thanks, and, Renee. Oh, I love the details in your patterns. And when we get to talking about um, digital versus paper, I want to talk about that um, as well, but we're sure. getting... All right. So I didn't mean to interrupt you. <laughs> I mean, I, as you can tell, I'm quite an enthusiast about this. I could go on for some time. But there was one other thing I wanted to show you that I think is very um, telling. When I, I'm going to just hold this up. When I was first started studying pattern making, um, we made a, what's called a sloper. And this is just a, it's a cardboard thing that you make um, based on measurements. And the measurements are the measurements for the typical hourglass, US size six hourglass figure. And okay. if you look at this, this is the, the front bodice. You can see this looks like every bodice, front bodice you ever saw. So that would be what what commercial patterns, what we would call mm -hmm. like the big four would be yes. standardized block that everything else is coming from that basic block. That's right. And you can see that the back, they think that the back is perfectly straight and you can see that the waist goes in a little, right? And here's what the style falcon one looks like. Wow. And I and I the couple things to draw your attention to. Um the, the arm side is is much deeper because we tend to carry more flesh also on our upper arms as we get older. And and because of the shaping of the back, you may have a you know a little curving like this. Yeah. So there's there's shaping back here. There's also a, a dart, you know, typically in a traditional sloper, there's a, a dart in the in the shoulder and it mm -hmm. is faint, it is pointing toward that shoulder in that back area, which tends to be where the fullness is. Mm -hmm. Whereas on the youthful hourglass one, it's in line with the spine. It's hold, it's it's shifted yeah. to where it actually needs to be for now instead of where it was before. Yeah. So that's mm -hmm. kind of just a good example of of what of how this block is different. And when I say block, what I mean is the the building block, the foundation of the yeah. overall pattern line. And I could go on and on about the sleeve like in the, in the front bodice and the skirt and other pieces, but that gives you a little taste of what I'm talking about. Yeah, it's, I, and I'd love to hear in the chat how many of you um, have, have you know, really kind of given up on commercial patterns or just had that real level of frustration because 
you know, they maybe they used to work and and now they don't. I don't know. You know, we've talked about this before on, on other shows, but um, or I've talked about it in my newsletter that I do every weekend. And that is I'm a I'm a I'm a pattern patternaholic pattern saver. I have patterns from my past that I just you know, I just like looking at them. But in reality, you know, they're if, if for some of us that have patterns that are older, they may have worked at one time, but they're not going to work now without, again, a lot of um, additions, subtractions <laughs> and yeah. frustrations. Yep. So that's true. That really does make a, a, a huge, huge, huge difference. And, you know, I love what you have on, on your site because you've got so much. Um, let me just bring up this little, um, you know, thing here. You've got tons and tons of info and tutorials. And I, I love the tutorials that you've done because it really takes what you have in your patterns and what you're talking about now and, and expands on it further in a way that, you know, really, really rounds everything out for sure. Hmm. Oh, thanks. That's is, I think that is really, really, really important. Yep. Renee says she's been um, frustrated. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And Jenny, Jenny, hey, Jenny, you're a pattern, pattern uh, hog. I like that. Yeah. That's um, I, I yeah. did her down a little bit, but boy, I had, I, I had an awful lot of them that I just, I absolutely couldn't part with. They got memories, memories in those mm -hmm. envelopes. Yep. Yeah. Lynn quit well, I, out of I did a lot of uh, market research um, before I started this line. And, and it was the number one thing that, that people said is that I stopped, I stopped sewing because the, the, these patterns don't fit me anymore. And I don't mean like they don't fit in some general way. Like they, they don't fit remotely and it's just too frustrating for people. And so I thought maybe I'm onto something here. Absolutely. <laughs> Carla well, thank you for the confirmation that that is, that is, a, that is an issue. <laughs> Absolutely. And Carla says she has patterns in her past and they um, have multiple sizes on them. And that, that definitely mm -hmm. helps. And in fact, that brings me to the point of uh, your patterns. Let's talk just a little bit about the, the patterns that you've got now, both digitally and, yeah. and, uh, and paper. So, um, I was thrilled to see, I went through your whole line and I was thrilled to see that you've got paper patterns for everything now, right? Uh -huh. I so let's have a fun little poll in the chat. Um, I'd, yeah. I, digital patterns are relatively new to me. So let mm -hmm. me talk about it for, for, um, just a minute. Uh, when you, you know, you kind of were one of the, one of the first digital pattern companies that I really wanted to purchase from, to be perfectly honest oh. with you. Um, and so when I did, um, and I downloaded it, like, mm -hmm. and I'd love to know how many of you have never done this before, because, you know, there's always a first time for everything. And when I downloaded it, I was like, whoa, <laughs> you know, because I was used to at least with tissue, uh, you know, I could kind of see those, those graduated lines a little bit. And then you taught me a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful trick. Now, I don't know. Let me know if you have a tutorial on this on your site or not. If you don't, I might do my own little I tutorial do. for my, yeah. okay. Um, where you can print just one size. So That's once right. you told me that I was, oh, good to go. Because yeah, you know, it's fine if you want to do all the sizes and you do want to um, graduate um, or you can print more than one size, right? You could print like three sizes. So yeah, that kind of pairs it down. But I, I fit almost perfectly into your first size into size your A. Mm -hmm. So with very little, very little adjustment. So for me, it's like, why would I want to print all that extra, all those extra lines? I just want that. And you taught me how to do that. And that's, so that's what I do from now on. I'll just hold up one of mine, <laughs> one of my patterns. Oh, there I, you go. Yep. That's the sublime Perfect. shell ready to go. So that is a, that is a really, 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 really great option. But I'd love to know um, how many of you really enjoy the digital downloads. And we could talk about the advantages of it. I, the obvious advantage is you don't have to wait, right? It's there. It's there. It's instantaneous. But there are some, you know, there's there's the, you know, the the, the positive and the, and the negative side. You have to print it. And I know people, some people today don't even have a printer. Mm -hmm. So that's, you know, that that could be an issue, an issue for some. Um, some of us don't like to use ink. <laughs> if you have a laser printer, I always print my patterns on the laser printer because I don't care about the color. So I save my color ink printer for, for other things. Um, but you, you know, definitely, um, it's, it's nice not to have to do that, but you've got options for your digital patterns. So why don't you tell mm -hmm. us 
a little bit about what what it all means to buy a digital pattern, and then we'll talk about about your paper patterns. Sure. Yeah. yeah. So, um, so the digital patterns, as you say, Joanne, um, they 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 arrive immediately. Um, they are available worldwide, and if you are a Style Falcon member of the Style Falcon flock, you will be in a in good company with the women from Australia, South Africa, Britain, Europe, other parts of Europe, Asia, uh, all over the United States and Canada. Um, so that's cool. <laughs> and you get it immediately. And if you if you don't want to use it right away, you can store it. You don't have paper, you know, a paper pattern hanging around your house. Um, and but the, the big the big benefit and they it, they are cheaper because there isn't been the expense to print it and ship it to you. And and as I'm sure everyone is aware, the, the cost of doing some things, even just a basic black and white printing is has increased astronomically. Yeah. Uh, and that has been difficult. And it used to be that the the factory that published um, that would print like the McCall's patterns and so forth used to also print ind independent pattern companies patterns, but no more. So uh, that is a big problem for everybody in, in this business. So we have to, we, we, we get along, we go along and get along, um, yeah. but you can choose your own size. You can either print it at home and tape it together. I have a tutorial on YouTube on my YouTube channel, which is just style Falcon. You can find it pretty easily that, We'll show you exactly what happens when you get a digital file, how you download it, how you store it, how you can choose your sizes, and how you can print it. And you can either print it at home or you can bring it or email it to uh, any print shop, whether it's like a Staples, Kinko's kind of thing, or to just a local print shop, and they will print it for you. And it's it's usually, you know, it's pretty reasonable. It's a, it's a few dollars, um, but it's on, it is on nice, sturdy paper instead of yeah. a tissue. Yeah. And you know, one of the other things um, that I, I like to make the point of is when we design, I work with a graphic artist to design my, the look and feel of my patterns, they're nice bold black lines. They so you are. Can really see. And, and this was another thing that came up. People said, I don't sew anymore because um, garments anymore because nothing remotely fits me. Or they said, I can't make out the markings on the pattern. I can't make out the, the um, directions are too tiny. Like the, the print is too tiny, the little illustrations are too tiny. So I have, uh, everything is mixed bold. You can see it for sure. And also there's a large print version of all the instructions available. If you need the large print, even if you just like it and you'd like to follow along with your iPad or something. It's yeah, like yeah. I, I, I really love the options that, that you've provided. And I, I think, and hey, Birdie, we got to say hi to Birdie. She's a, a, a what we call a frequent flyer here. So good to have you here, Birdie. Um, but I think... Um, Here's my here's my two cents on it, okay? Because I really did not warm up to to digital patterns, and maybe it's because I've been sewing with regular commercial patterns for so many years. That's one thing. Number two, I actually like, um, you know, I like sitting down and cutting all the paper apart. I really yeah. enjoy doing that. I don't know why, but I do. You know, I like sitting with pattern tissue all spread out all over, cutting it up. Maybe tell me, let me know in the chat if you're crazy like me, <laughs> but, um, you know, it just, I think the biggest thing was it was, it was just new and it was different. And then I knew I was going to, oh, I'm going to have tables all together. I've never been much for jigsaw puzzles. So that to me, it kind of reminded me of jigsaw puzzle, but I will have to say, and this is what I really recommend. Try the different options, you know, try Maybe, you know, maybe you want to uh, download it and then and have it printed um, by somebody else. Great option. No, no big deal. It, it works. Um, you're still going to get, you know, get it quicker than you are if you're if you're waiting for um, for, you know, shipping for one thing. Um, however, if again, if you you watch Diane's tutorial on how to pick sizes and like I said, if you pick maybe I can't imagine anybody needing more than about three sizes. All it depends, you know. Yeah. You know, that would probably be the average. For me, again, I was fortunate mine, I only needed one. But um once I printed it out and and then I cut them apart, and I use my rotary I use a rotary cutter blade that I save just mm -hmm. for paper yeah. and a ruler, and I do it on a cutting mat. I think that that makes it really easy because you show exactly where to cut the paper off mm -hmm. and how to overlap it. And then once I started taping them together. I was having fun. <laughs> yeah. I actually enjoyed it. And like uh -huh. I said, now I've got, you know, my pattern all, all done, uh -huh. all yeah. ready to go. I did a minor little alter alteration on mine. 
Uh And what I recommend then afterwards, I'm going to make a, I'm going to make a trial garment. We probably should Mm -hmm. talk about that a little bit, but um, make a test garment the first time around with any pattern. If you really want to make sure that everything is going to be okay and you're not going to waste fabric that you really are in love with or Mm -hmm. invested in, this is just stuff I had in my stash that was left over from a project years ago. So yeah. Uh, Rayon Shally, and we're going to talk about fabrics in a minute here. But mm-hmm. um, once I make this, then my preference, because uh, patterns like yours, your whole line, once again, we, you know, we saw just a little overview of, of your lineup. I, I think if somebody wanted to start and li- literally take like everything out of their closet, this is one of the things I love about Style Falcon pattern line, take everything out of your closet and start fresh. Don't we all fantasize over that every once in a while? Oh, if I could just get rid of everything, maybe almost everything and start fresh. Everything in your lineup is going to work for pretty much everything in your lifestyle. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's the idea. Once, <laughs> once I have perfected a pattern and, and made it, so I'm going to use it again and again and again, at least three times, those again mm-hmm. and again and again, <laughs> maybe even more and change up the style. I can't wait to do some embroidery on mine. You know, you can do color blocking, you mm-hmm. can try different fabrics. You could do all kinds of different things. But what I will do once I test this and make sure that this is exactly what I need for my personal fit, I'm going to transfer this to pattern tracing cloth Mm -hmm. because I love pattern tracing cloth. I can fold it up nice and flat. It barely wrinkles. You know, it's not like paper that gets creased or I save uh, paper towel rolls Mm -hmm. a lot of times or Um, patterns that I use frequently. And that way I can, you know, the small pieces will roll right up on there. The other pieces I just fold slightly and, and roll them all up. So that's just my, my personal preference. But I really think that once you try the different methods, um, you might decide you actually like uh, putting those, putting those pieces together. I'm going to bring up a couple comments. Um, Hey, Forrest, good to have you here today. I hope Saturday is a good day for you. Um, he never cut his tissue patterns. He always traced them on a butcher paper, yeah. um, and then cut. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Sure. And you know, I, I hear what you're saying for us because we always think about, you know, oh boy, that's 20 sheets of paper or whatever, but paper really is cheap in the scheme of things. Mm-hmm. So, and, and ink is, I know ink isn't what we would call cheap, but I will have to say this about ink. If you have an inkjet printer, if you're not using it regularly, you're going to be sorry <laughs> because, um, you know, if you want to print a lot economically, then you want to look into a laser printer, mm-hmm. uh, an actual laser printer. They're, they only print black and white, but if that's what you're going to do a lot of, they're not expensive. The ink lasts like for eons and eons. We, we have both in our household, mm-hmm. but if you do have an inkjet printer, you do want to use it uh, pretty regularly because Otherwise, things get dried up in there. Ask me how I know. <laughs> Good tips. I'm going to bring up just a, a, a couple questions here. So <laughs> Vanessa wants to know, how hard is it to size down at the waist and hips if she's an A at the bust and uh, upper bust? Mm-hmm. Sure. Um, I think that the most of the, the patterns are they're pretty straight cut through the, the bust and, and waist area. So and, and a lot of them have, have quite a bit of drape to them. Um, let me pull up, here's the, this is one of my other popular patterns. This is a gorgeous Godet top. And it it's pretty close fitting here at the shoulders and bust. And then it has a lot of drape and it has these cool uh, diamond shaped Godets on the side, which you can do color blocking or something like that to, to make it, really make it special to do it yourself. Um, and when, when you have something that's draping like this, you don't really need to grade in. Um, it you just will let the drape do its thing. You can take a little bit out if you want. It depends on the piece. Um, I, I suggest if people wanted to try something, the Sublime Shell, which this is the paper version, um, is a good one to start with because it's the most fitted and it's a woven fabric. So it doesn't, you don't have the stretch that you'd have with a knit and, and so forth um, to give yourself a chance to, to try what this looks like. Um, if you, so if you did want to take it in something that like one of my customers did is she, she made the sublime shell and then she added some fisheye darts in the back cause she has little waist definition and she, she and she took the sides in a little bit. Um, and, and really what you would do is I would just make it straight out of the package, make the size a and turn it, 
try it on and put it on inside out and then pin it, pin off the excess any place where you don't want it in the seam line. So maybe on the side or in the back and that way you'll get the fit that you want. And, and I, I would have to say too, for those of you that are not familiar with the Style Falcon pattern line, your your first look at them, you will notice that they're not, they're not, or let's say, let's not say they're not, let's say they are. They are designed to be very forgiving on the figure. So just like you're talking, so it's yeah. not as, you know, it's not as critical in, in, a, in a lot of areas. And I think if you kind of, you know, do a, a guesstimate as your as your first uh, sample, you'll probably see that you have a lot less, a lot less <laughs> um, changes that that maybe you actually think you're you're going to need to make. So Patty's got a, a, a good comment here. She says it's fun cutting up commercial patterns. <laughs> she thinks it's because it always meant new clothes, and that was exciting. That is a great <laughs> thought, there, Patty. Absolutely, absolutely. Right. Like the whole universe is yours at that point, right? Like yep. the yep. the yeah. <laughs> Linda says she's tried both ways. She still likes commercial patterns. Um, that and you know, we all, you know, we all like to do everything. Um, uh, Dara says she hates uh, cutting out, so she tries to do several at a time so that she's um, ready to stitch. Yeah, we're all different, aren't we? It's so funny. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Patricia, glad to have you here. So while while we've got Patricia here up for a minute, let me take just a minute to um, thank everybody that is. Um, watching live and on the replay. Um, we are live today on uh, Facebook and on YouTube. And I appreciate so much all of you taking time out of your day. And it's, 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 it's just always a lot of fun live, you know, the chat. And it's like, it's almost like we're in the same room together, um, having, having a, a, a get together. But I do appreciate everybody that's watching on the, um, on the replay as well. And if you like the show, I'm going to ask you to do what everybody asks to do on YouTube, but it is important if you um, hit the like button, uh, if you subscribe and hit the bell for notifications, um, it is a, a great compliment um, for me. I really appreciate having you here as a uh, Let's Go So uh, stitching friend. And also the whole thing with liking, if you like the video, not only does is it is it good for for us when we when we broadcast like this, but it's also good for other sewing enthusiasts that are looking for similar content. Because if you liked it, then YouTube will say, "Oh, someone else that's looking for sewing might like it too." So you're actually helping your sewing friends out there that you maybe never um, never knew before. <laughs> so that's always a good thing, and I appreciate that. But we got some um, some good comments. So let me bring a few up. I've got saved a few that I don't I don't want to miss. Um, and then we'll go right into the uh, Sublime Shell itself. Um, Lynn says she can't wait to try your patterns. Thanks, what a Lynn. wonderful way to design. Yep, absolutely. Um, Sarah is in need of new clothes. So Sarah, you can celebrate with a whole new wardrobe. I encourage you to do that. Um, Janice loves your haircut, Diane. <laughs> yeah, this is different, I think, from last time when I was on. I'm it is to a little different. You yeah. wear it well. You absolutely Thanks. wear it well. Thanks. And um, Sandra says she's going to make herself a dress for the first time in years. Good for you, Sandra. Dresses are really pretty forgiving. Um, you know, they're, yeah. they're maybe we may think of them as a little more advanced in the uh, sewing expertise realm. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's, but they're really not, it's just big, they're bigger. That's all. They're bigger, they're usually right. bigger than what you're, you, what you're making, but certainly yeah. a whole lot easier than, than, you know, some garments where you've got to do, uh, you know, crotch seams and zippers and all. That's that true. Kind of thing, so that's true. I wanted to show this one. This is the, my, one of my dress patterns is called the two hour dress. And it's called that because it literally does take about two hours to make it. You make it out of a jersey or an ITY knit, like a light knit. Yeah. And it just slips over your head. It has a princess seam with a square neckline, which is very on trend right now. Um, you can also make a top or, you, or the dress, which has um, kind of a swishy hem with a split hem. And it also has these kind of interesting slouchy pockets that are fun. I, I love that pattern. I absolutely love it. And that's a super it. easy one. And it, it's a good beginner friendly one. And I, if you really want to push the boat out, as they say, and you want to do, you want to like sink your teeth into something really like a designer pattern, this is the probably the most complex pattern I have. It's called the make a point dress. And you can also make a big shirt out of it. And it has 
a modern princess seam. It has hidden pockets in the side. It has um, the button plackets, there's sleeve plackets. It's um, This is for an advanced sewer or, or someone who's a confident intermediate sewer. Yeah. Um, it's beautiful. It's, that's what the, my, this is what my um, dress form is wearing. I love it. I love it. That one is definitely on my to-do list. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's pretty cool. Again, probably, you know, um, don't say ne never say never, but if you if you have a little experience just making that would be something for you to try if you really want to sink your teeth into a complex project. We could definitely almost do a show on every every single pattern. Maybe we could, we could do a little uh, some mini shows on that. But um, that brings right up to uh, Cindy's uh, comment. She says she struggles with um, wearing the same old same old, and yeah, your patterns actually absolutely do um, mix and match. And Deborah says. Mm -hmm. uh, Shaping a flat fabric to a 3D body is like sculpture. Absolutely. Absolutely. And then um, Professora says, could that be why so many women are quilting and machine burning because they've stopped? Absolutely. I hear it all the time. And I that's another whole subject for itself. But I have a lot of quilting friends. Many of you are here. Many of us like to do a little bit of a lot of different things. But mm -hmm. I do have some friends that, that have totally 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 stop doing any type of sewing except quilting and mm -hmm. good for them they're happy in it but they'll they'll say at times that or they never maybe they never did garment sewing at all and they just got into quilting they they think garment sewing is so much harder mm -hmm. i beg to differ when i do quilt projects and i don't i pretty much do you know pretty simple ones i get into some of those more tedious ones i'm like oh give me a sleeve to set in any day mm -hmm. over piecing these little little pieces together <laughs> and Caroline, yep. um, Caroline does a lot of sewing of a lot of different oh, things. Okay. She loves the digital patterns because she can um, print point. another and, and change it. Yeah, that's that's the other thing. You you don't have to go out and buy another whole pattern. You just print another one for yourself. So. Anne's got a really interesting comment. She is an mm -hmm. engineer by training mm -hmm. and has studied many books on um, pattern alteration. But it but even for her, as with an engineering mindset and, and training. Um, um, she felt it, it took too much work and time to get mm. a decent fit. Delia says she doesn't use a uh, commercial pattern. Oh. She's cloned her own clothes that fit well. That's yeah. a great, great option. And Delia, That's I would awesome. encourage you to, you know, keep doing that and then maybe um, try a few um, style Falcon patterns to kind of round out the mix. And we'll do mm -hmm. one more here. Um, Lynn says she has a oh. friend who projects. Yeah. Did we talk about that? We didn't. I do not currently offer projector a, a, a special file for projectors. If if there's okay. demand for it, I'll do it. I haven't heard that there is. I yeah, and I, and it, this would be a fun little test place to see, you know, um, how many of you think you would like to do um, projected patterns. Um, I know there's a there's another again another another topic for another day maybe, but there's a a whole new gig out there for um, doing uh, projected patterns and, and I'm still on the fence over it. Um, for one yeah. thing, I don't know. I, I think that, I, don't, I think it's gonna be a while before that comes into mainstream really mm -hmm. and truly. Yeah. Um, and I still think that for a lot of us that have sewn for a period of time, which many of us here have sewn for a period of time, um, we're we're still in that very um tangible world where we we i i like the sound i like the sound. <laughs> you hear that in my okay i like the sound of that pattern paper i yeah. like the, i like having the visual to look at and even that once you've projected and you've cut you don't have the pattern piece anymore to look at and you can i'll just grab mine again one more time you can see another one of my um, plan of practice here is I always mm -hmm. keep my pattern pinned with at least one pin mm -hmm. to my piece before I start yeah. working with it. Because if I separate those, you know what I end up having to do? Take all the patterns back out, lay them back mm -hmm. on top. What was this? What was this? What was this? So not to mention, you don't want to stretch your pattern pieces out. And that's something that doesn't get talked up, talked about a lot in sewing, but you really don't want to to, to handle things much at all, if you can help it, or if you yeah. handle, you want to handle them gingerly, because that's, especially if you've got a bias edge or something like that, you're in for trouble. Yeah. If you're, uh, you know, throwing it around, you're sorry. And yeah. And Mary says she's never even heard of projected patterns. Uh -huh. You need a certain, yes, you need a projector or you need you some type of a, 
of a system. So yeah, mm -hmm. Anne says uh, projected has the same. Yeah, if it's just project, it's just pro it's just projecting an outline instead of you having a physical yes. a physical paper. Yeah, it does. Um, the yeah. other thing I, I did want to mention is the digital patterns have in addition to all the sizes that you can choose. Uh, which are called layers, there's also a layer option for a one inch grid. And you can use that one inch grid with a projector if you want. And the way that it works is you would project the image onto your fabric and then you would calibrate it so that it the what's projecting directly onto the fabric it measures exactly one inch by one inch. Got it. And, and, and so you can use a, a projector with it, but it's not a dedicated, there are dedicated projector files, which I don't, I don't carry it because I don't think it's worthwhile for me to do it, frankly, right now. Well, but again, I think, if there's demand for it, I'll do it. Um, yeah, I think there's a whole different niche of 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 sewers too. And mm -hmm. yes, you, you you know you're right, Patty. You can't you can't you can't alter. Uh, right. You have to alter it prior, and that's another again that's another whole whole um, whole thing. And and it's um, it, it gets a little bit a little bit um, complicated. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. just like Melanie says. Yeah, so yeah. it's it's definitely. So let let's let's bring up that sublime shell, oh, sure. shall we? And take a look at that pattern. Mm -hmm. um, that is really what our 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 main focus is today is for tea and tutorials. Mm -hmm. <laughs> My little play on tea. It for <laughs> me, it's 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 a t-shirt type top. And when I say t-shirt, I use that term very mm -hmm. very very loosely. To me, that just means it's a a, a blouse or a top that you are able to pop over your head, has very simple kind of lines, almost like, you know, just, you know, just mm -hmm. sleeves and a, and a semi-straight body. Mm -hmm. um, but yours is definitely um, got lots and lots and lots of style. So tell us a little bit about what the concept was for designing this. Sure. Um, you know, someone had mentioned, or maybe it was even you, Joanne, had mentioned that you know, all the, the style thought and line uh, goes together and it is a collection and it is meant to go together. So when you start designing something, you think about um, who is this woman I'm designing for? Where is she going? What is she doing? What does she need? What does she want? Um, you know, what's what's accessible and, and friendly uh, w versus what's meant for, you know, someone who's advanced or someone who, who really wants to sink their teeth into something complex. And so you come up with what's called a collection. And there's there's eight pieces in the collection. Seven of them are out right now. And the eighth is a pant pattern, an additional pant pattern that's coming soon. Um, that's a stretch pant, but I also have uh -huh. a, a woven pant that's that's out there that's a, a bestseller. Um, so in, in the case of the Sublime Shell, there were two things I wanted to do with this. One, I wanted, you have things that are, are beginner friendly or that are accessible to people, and then you have some advanced things. So the jacket pattern that I have, which I think we talked about a little bit last time, mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. is this one. Yeah, and, and and we do it. We did already have a comment. They want to see more clothes on your rack. Oh, so okay, I think, yeah, these are all samples I, back I here. We'll, so say, we'll save we that for the end. We'll one. save that for the end. We'll do a real quick fashion show. So this jacket, it's a raglan sleeve jacket, and I wanted a top that would go under it. I'm gonna try and to bring so it that's up. That's really yeah. how that top came to be born. Um, but what I wanted was something that that was a shell that was a layering piece because a lot of us we run hot or cold right we're constantly we've got a little we're always taking things off putting things on what have you and and so um, it seemed to make sense to do a little woven t-shirt top that has it has vest darts and darts in the back of the neck um, there's a cap sleeve or a short sleeve it's easy to trick out sleeves and make them longer or flare them out or, or have a lot of fun with them. Um, and there's a couple of neckline options. So this is one we were going to talk about. Lots there's a binding lots. and there's a facing. So here's the here's the binding. Um, and the facing is, is I mean, this is, this is the binding, excuse me. And you can do, I did a contrast, I did a white binding in this case. Um, or the facing, which is, sits on the inside, you know, facing your body is why it's called the facing. Because uh -huh. um, people are team facing or they're team binding. Yep. We so, had this whole conversation on Facebook a couple of weeks ago, and I'm curious, people, if you want to vote, are you team facing? Are you team binding? Yep. Let, you let us know what what your preference is, and I'm going to tell you mine um, real quick here. Yeah. I I like to use a binding primarily when I'm working with knits, and we're going to talk about fabrics here in just a second. I want to hear all the the fabrics that that you recommend, but I think this would be suitable for what we would call 
a, a lighter weight, um, stable knit. So your knits that don't have very much stretch would work very much like a woven. And I like to use a binding for that because, um, it, you know, it, it's it kind of keeping in theme with what you would purchase ready to wear. Mm -hmm. Most of your ready to wear knit tops have a, have a binding or a band. And I like the fact that with a, a knits, they don't ravel. So I can just do my right sides together from the front, flip it to the back, flip mm -hmm. right over the seam allowance and top stitch it and then trim away the excess. Yeah. So I would vote for binding on, on knits, but oh. on a woven garment, like my chalet, I really do like um, a facing for this type of fabric. And I've got my facings all, all cut out and ready to prep because one, one of the advantages with a facing is that you can interface it. That's right. So that gives you more structure. And if your fabric is a little bit flippy floppy, like the chalet is, mm -hmm. um, having that interfacing is going to really support your whole neckline. And that's where all of our garments hang from. Is, yeah. is from the neck. And in fact, I've got a really great trick for uh, making clean, finished, interfaced facings. And I will make sure I post that up at the top. Oh, so you yeah. have a link to, to that video. I think everybody would, would enjoy seeing that. So that's cool. I'd like to see that. Here's what the facing looks like for this top. And it's, it's a three piece facing because it's a raglan sleeve. So you'll get, if you have three pieces, I'll just put it, this is what's on the inside, which okay. you can't see, but it's on the, so you can just get a sense of what that's like. And it, it really hugs your shoulders beautifully this way. Um, and it's, it's a little more work. It's not for everyone, but if you wanted to do um, a binding, you can do a binding too. Both options are, are available. If you wanted to interface it, I think we were going to talk about some fabric options too. Definitely. Um, so yep. what you probably want is something that's like this. That's I, I like to just use the um, the iron-on interfacing. It's very mm -hmm. lightweight. Sometimes it's called a tissue weight. It's very light and floaty. You don't you don't want something that's really stiff. Like um, this is the kind of interfacing for a collar, and you can see how stiff and sort of papery that is. Definitely don't want that. Exactly. You want something that's soft and floaty, featherweight or lightweight um, for for the facing. And I've got a sample of one that I like that I'll show in a, in a couple of minutes here. So stay tuned for that. But mm -hmm. yes, I am with Cindy. I saw your question. And this is the sublime shell. This is the one with the facing. Yeah. Let me go ahead and bring up the, um, the image of you wearing mm -hmm. it. Oh yeah, here I am. <laughs> there you go. Full size and front and back. Mm -hmm. So we do have a question. Somebody um, wanted to know, I have to, I'd have to dig back to find it, but um, if you could turn that into a V-neck. She doesn't really care for um, round necks. You could turn it into a V-neck. You would you you would probably need to use a, a binding in, in that case. Um, I, I did have a question about turning into a V-neck, and I intend to offer that as an option in the future. It, like it a is, pattern hack. You could even do yeah. a pattern hack video. Because to me, yeah. I think an easy way to do that would just be to take another V-neck, whether it's one a ready-to-wear mm -hmm. or a pattern that you have, Lay it on top and then just retrace those lines and and then, mm -hmm. like you said, do do a binding on it. So I bet you could do a pattern hack yeah. on that one. Yeah, yeah, you could definitely do that. Or um if you if you wanted to, you could also widen the neckline or or make it make it a little deeper if you wanted, you know, um th those kinds of things are easy to play with. And as long as you make the same change to both the facing and the bodice itself. Exactly. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So would you like to know what some of the some of the answers were for um oh well, yeah team facing team got, binding we got Ginny says binding mm -hmm. for knits um Patty says Patty says binding for knits as well Vanessa says uh definitely facings and mm. fa and and I have to say too your facings let me grab grab mine your facings are bigger than commercial yes. pattern facings, which it's is another nice one of my tips. I always increase the size because when they're too small, mm -hmm. they tend to flip out and we don't, right. we don't like that. Yep. And the other thing we were going to talk about, I think Joanne was understitching. So uh, if you're, if you're sort of a beginner, you haven't done a lot of garment sewing, you might be better off with the binding. If you, if you're, especially if you're a quilter or something where you've, you're familiar with the concept of binding or to make I don't know, people make um, placemats and all kinds of stuff, right? Um, but if you do the facing, as I as I mentioned, I showed you that it's a three-piece facing and it and it sits on the inside, so you you don't see it. 
you need to do what's called understitching, which is basically where you're going to sew the facing down to itself through its seam allowances. And you need to do that so that it, it will help keep, see how nice this lays? Yes. Right? Yes. And the understitching basically tells it stay put. And um, I can show you here. This is an old sample. We have 100 samples of this. So I, I kind of ruined this one for this demonstration, but that's I'm not worried about it. <laughs> um, but here's the here's what it looks like. Um, you know, there's you don't see any stitching. If there's no top stitching, in other words, you don't see any stitching. But on the inside, here's the here's the understitching. Right. Right. And the way that that's done is you open it up like this. And you lay it you flat. It your machine, lay it flat press both the seam allowances toward the facing and then you stitch really close to the seam where the facing meets the bodice. I did it in black so you could see it. And you're going to go through the facing and both seam allowances. So it will show on the inside, but it doesn't show on the outside. Exactly. Now you can also just top stitch it. Like if you want a sportier look, you know, sometimes this is a more dressy look. If you want something a little sportier, or you could even do a contrast top stitching to mix it up a little, that's fine too. But if you want to do the um, the most fancy version, you would want to understitch it. And, you know, it, um, kind of a crazy thought, believe it or not, I've done facings um, on the outside. And, and the, what I'm wearing today is very hard for you to see. But this is one big facing. Yeah. And instead of tucking it to the inside, I flipped it to the outside, did cover hem stitching on it mm -hmm. as an accent. So. Hey, never say never. There's all kinds of different ways um, yeah. that you can do if this. Any of you are members of Pattern Review? Um, there's a woman who who sewed the Sublime Shell for the Pattern Review One Pattern Many Looks contest, and she made three versions of the Sublime Shell. And one of them, she did the facing on the outside, and she also made a blouse style dress out of it, and then she made a button up top out of it. Oh um, wow! I have a little placket here. So yeah, so check that out if you just if you put in the search box Sublime yep. Shell. Yeah. Lots really of different ways to do things. Um, Forrest says, um, too many people new to garment sewing forget the stay stitching. And, you know, I'll give you another one of my little tips for, for this. Um, I used to always do it with a straight stitch. And then once I got, uh, you know, because I uh, that's all I had for many years, I worked on commercial machines. But once I got a machine that had multiple stitches, I like to use a three-step zigzag mm -hmm. for mine because oh, okay. it covers a little bit more area. And you can set that that zigzag to whatever width you want. And then when you when you space it out with um, uh, increasing the stitch length, it's almost like crooked angular straight stitches. So mm -hmm. instead of just hitting one area, an eighth of an inch from the seam allowance or whatever, it 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 hits uh, more of the seam allowance and just anchors it down. So it just mm -hmm. works. It works. It works really good. That's a great tip. I'm going to try that, Joanne. I'm going to steal that. We're, we always we always end up learning from each other, right? Cindy says, "Is that the same stuff we use when embroidering a onesie?" I think she's talking about the interfacing, oh. and and it. No, I don't it, think. So. Well, it could be. Oh, I think okay. she, what Cindy might be thinking of is you when uh, when we do baby items or anything that may scratch the skin, we like to use a very fine fusible, and mm -hmm. I've got a picture of that for you in a minute here. So hang on, um, one of my favorites that covers up the stitches once you're done. Um, so that would be very, very popular to use on a onesie. So Cindy, let me know if that's oh. what you're actually talking about. That would work great as an interfacing for this type of top because it gives a little bit of body, but it still stays soft. So it doesn't change the actual character of the fabric. And I think that's pretty much what you were talking about, not changing the actual character of the fabric, right? Hmm. With, uh, tender touch. Um, some people call it tender touch. Oh, okay. I haven't heard of that before. Yeah, actually, the one. Well, go ahead. I'll bring up the the image of when we'll talk about notions a little bit here for a minute. Um, my some of my favorite sure. notions um, for this, and uh, we're going to talk about the darts in a minute. We did have a question if we can eliminate the darts, so we'll we'll get sure. back to that. We'll swing back to that. And I I like to mark my darts. Um, there's a lot of different ways. Sometimes I will use a uh, tailor tax. I might need to do a tutorial on that because when mm -hmm. I say that, some people go, what? <laughs> you know, that goes way back, but they work. But one of my favorite ways to mark things is to use the uh, Clover brand uh, 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 tracing paper. Mm -hmm. I'm, trying, I'm trying to think of the actual, uh, the actual, actual word for it. Uh, tracing yeah, tracing paper. Yeah, tracing paper. Yeah. 
-hmm. but this one is is very highly washable it's not like the old waxy kind i would never yeah. use that again um but this one washes out very easily i always test it first though make sure make sure make sure because you never know so always test it first and clover actually makes a a tracing wheel that is not mm -hmm. serrated these would be the type of items I would say you're either going to go online for, or my first recommendation is always go to your local sewing machine dealer. These are the kind of things that they will often have or can order for you. And then I like to make my own uh, stabilizer in your pattern. You actually recommend mm -hmm. stabilizing the neckline. Right. So we were talking about those different names of in the embroidery world, which is another whole world, but in the embroidery world, there are different brands, to, uh, you know, that, that make that kind of a Trico like um, that's very soft. But it, the difference is from regular Trico interfacing is it stretches multi-directionally. Mm -hmm. So in every direction. And the one that I found in the big box store that is the most comparable to it is Pelon 180 Knit and Stable Interfacing. And that's mm -hmm. what I've cut my strips from here. Mm -hmm. I use it a ton and so if you can't find it in any other brand, look for the Pellon brand. A lot of people are not aware of that. Hmm. So that's a good one. I'll have to send you a little. I've sent I've sent friends packages of that because they were like, I never saw that before. Right. And it may be just one of those obscure ones. It's usually only in a package, not on the bolt. You don't usually hmm. find it on the bolt, hmm. um, but it, it works really good. And uh, oh. Lynn finds German baby interfacing. Wow, that's got to be something special. And yep, Janice, you're right. That covers covers the stitches. Janice also didn't think that uh, they had <laughs> paper available. Marilyn, yeah. did you learn how to do um, tailor tacks and at at Kent State? That's good uh -huh. to know because that's a good that's a good thing to know to know how to do. <laughs> Nice. All right. Well, you're going to talk about some fabric choices for that yeah. beautiful um, shell. So uh, it's woven fabrics. Uh, you can, it's lightweight woven fabrics and you want something that has some drape to it. I know many times people will say, well, is quilting cotton okay? And it's, it's probably not. It, it, if you, if you have some quilting cotton and it's pretty soft and you've washed it a few times so that it's pliable, it might be okay. But really a apparel fabric is 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 better whether it's a cotton polyester or um linen or a couple other things so or silk so i'll, I'll give you a few options um let's see this is uh, a version that i made of a silk georgette this is a, i am team facing by the way for the most part but i do a binding on a shear because you don't want the facing to show um and it this is it seems kind of sheer but when it's when it's on it it's not the see-through but you know, with the light shining on it, you can see it's pretty. I um, love the idea of a sheer. I almost yeah. cut mine out of a sheer because I have a lot of tank tops that have like built in bra and that's what I'll use like underneath something a lot of times. Mm -hmm. And and it's beautiful to wear a yeah. sheer top over a camisole like that. Yeah, exactly. I'm, 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 I'm crazy about this. And I mean, I wear it with like a jacket. I wear it to work, you know, not, um, it's perfectly fine. And then, so that's, that's like a, a silk, um, Georgette, this is a silk chiffon, which is the kind of fabric that is very sheer. You definitely yeah. need a, a cami under this. Um, but this is, see, you can see how, how fluid and drapey it is. This is the, the kind of fabric that they often make scarves out of. And this would be a great, another great sheer option if that's your bag. Um, and it, you know what? The, the um, silk chiffon is so luxurious. Yeah. It is just, there's nothing that feels quite like it. Can mm -hmm. I give a, a couple tips on um, yeah. putting out those slippery, slinky fabrics? Because even my rayon chalet find, I was kind of skidding around. So mm -hmm. a couple things. First of all, don't be afraid to use lots of pins. I love the flat flower type pins because I can, um, a lot of times I try to cut out with a rotary cutter and a ruler. So I will use my straight edge ruler for all of the straight edges. If it's a small curved area, I use a smaller rotary cutter because you know the wheel is smaller and I simply start past the cut line and and cut past the cut line. Oh, so okay. I'm in a sweeping motion, you know, cutting in to the outside area of the fabric. And that works really, really well. Sometimes I'll use my curved fashion ruler as an edge guide and, you know, so I can get a really good clean cut 
um, with that rotary cutter. So rotary cutting okay. helps. You mean something like this? Exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. Mine's this is a see-through, so this isn't helping anybody very much. Yeah, but that, that's exactly what I use. Exactly. Yeah. I, I, I use that regularly for, for mm -hmm. cutting out and for obviously pattern alteration. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. But yeah. the other thing, when you're cutting those slippery fabrics, if you do like to cut with scissors, if you can get yourself a pair of serrated shears, the serrated shears have little like micro teeth on the blades. So they literally, when they, when you, when you're cut into the fabric, they grip the fabric. So the scissor blades actually hold it. And while it's cutting, it's held into place so that it doesn't start to slip away from you. So those mm -hmm. serrated scissors work really well. Mm -hmm. And then if you're really having trouble with it sliding all over your table, buy some inexpensive, you probably already have it, uh, uh, white wrapping tissue paper. Yes. Put it on your table, tape, every, tape your fabric to it, and then tape your pattern through all of those layers, the tissue, mm -hmm. the fabric, and the actual, oh, yeah. and the actual. That's fabric. an old bridal, uh, bridal dressmaking tip. It, um, it works. And, it works. And, and then there's one other uh, trick you can try if you want to, you can buy a, a flannel back tablecloth flip it upside down so that you've got the flannel side facing up and that provides a, a grippy surface as well. You just got to be careful. You don't cut through it while you're, while you're cutting, but it'll just, it, it's, it just um, creates a little bit of a grip there. Hmm. Gotcha. So hopefully that helps. Yeah. Cool. Um, a few other, if you're, if, if, if this is sounding a little too fussy for you, these <laughs> slippery fancy fabrics, there's a few more um, fabrics that I'll show you. This is um, a crepe. It's a polyester crepe, and this is is very inexpensive, and it's available everywhere. Um, but it it also has a nice drape. It's pretty slinky, and um, but but less slippery than uh, a chalet is also is also a good a good option. And I've made some of these tops up chalet too. Um, but that's a good option if you wanted to get into something that was more stable and you wanted to get into the cottons. Um, this is a cotton voile, which is a, a rather sheer, a very lightweight cotton. If you happen to be a crazy, crazy person for Liberty of London prints like this one, this is a great project for it because the size, most of the sizes only take a little, a yard or a little more than a yard or a, a meter of fabric. So this is a great top to splurge on uh, maybe an expensive fabric like these beautiful Liberty of London cotton lawn fabrics. You won't use too much and you can make a first version as Joanne was saying out of an inexpensive fabric to you know make sure that the fit is everything is great and then you can feel free to splurge on something like this another good option splurges, oh. right gotta have some splurges if you're gonna do your own oh yeah if you're gonna I mean, do your I, own I sewing, think well splurges. Splurges. <laughs> for the for the right thing I mean one of the other goals that I had when I was designing this top is I wanted something you could make in about a yard of fabric you know something that that was economical we all have these yards of fabric hanging around and we wonder what to do with them um, and especially yeah, when you went, when you, you went to the fabric store and you fell in love and you said, just give me a yard of that. Right. Yeah. And you went home and you were so sorry. You didn't say, just give me four yards of that. <laughs> yeah. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Um, if you want to try some fabrics other than cotton, this is a, a handkerchief weight linen, which is also good. It's a little stiffer. It, I would definitely pre-wash it. This hasn't been, this hasn't been pre-washed. Um, but it, it has this lovely slubby texture to it that yeah. has a lot of dimension and that's always a really pretty option um and, and again for anything that's that's a little more on the sheer side you might want to go with the binding instead of the facing for the neckline so that you don't see the facing um, Perfect. this this fabric is a poplin it's a cotton poplin which is like every button down shirt you ever had is made out of like a cotton poplin <laughs> Oh, so well, you know that's really good to know because sometimes yeah. when you you look at and and at the fabric you know um, suggestions, you think, well, you know, cotton poplin isn't really drapey, but no. it works perfect for that. So yeah, again, it's, you it's know, it's kind of the stiffest that you'd want to have. Yeah. Um, and it, it definitely has a different uh, vibe to it than this. Like no question. It, it has a different vibe, but it's, it's more structured and it's, it's good for, um, it's good for certain looks, right? Um, a couple other ones that are good. Seersucker makes a nice version of this. If, oh, especially I wouldn't have thought of that. Yeah. Yeah. If you get, you get kind of, this is a, a kind of a, a, you know, more a lighter one. Again, you don't, you want to choose one that would be a, a lighter version, not one that you'd make like a suit out of. Um, but that's a good option. And then this is um a, like a, just a shirting, a light shirting. 
like every man's dress shirt you ever saw. Um, if it's on the, again, if it's on the light side, it will work just great for this top. Love it. I love it. Lots and lots and lots of options. So we're going to be, um, we're going to be only on for a few more minutes. So if you've got some um, really big questions, get them in here now and make sure um, Diane answers them because I think you've already answered so many different things. Let's talk about just real quick uh, um, the whole dart issue. Um, yeah, when, I can and show you um, when it, this does have a have a bust dart because if you have you know it's designed for someone who has maybe like a C to D cup, but you can eliminate the dart entirely or you can reduce it if you have a smaller bust or if you don't have a bust at all you can feel free to do that another thing if you um if you wanted to make it out of a knit you could try a knit usually has what's called negative ease so it's a little smaller um than a, a woven fabric is always has additional ease in it so you can move otherwise it's skin tight and you can barely move but this is the um this is the uh, the t-shirt that i have it's called the um, gorgeous Godet top. It's a little hard to see. Um, I don't know if this is really going to show, but it's pretty. Instead of having the, uh, this is the, on the side seam where the dart would be, there's a gather point here. And it's very subtle. So you don't really see it, but you know it's there. And you just stretch where the dart would be, you stretch from the front to the back. Gotcha. And it gathers up just you're, enough. So you're, you're, easing it in. you're easing it in instead of sewing it in. Yeah. Exactly. So it gives you a little of that definition and gives, you know, your boobs a place to go in this t-shirt. <laughs> so it's not like really skin tight on you. Um, but it's not, you know, no one wants to sew a dart typically in a, in a knit. Um, so that's an option to try. I haven't tried it personally. So if you have tried, if you do try it, please let me know. I'd be really curious to see how it turns out. But that is the technique we use for the gorgeous Godet top, um, which I've got a copy of. the, And this is what the pattern looks like. Um, and you can see if I if I hold it up, maybe you can see on the side here. Mm -hmm. That's where yeah. the gathers it's just, are. It's just all, a little, little, design. Bit, a little it's bit. It's very subtle. There. It's very subtle, but it's definitely there, and it makes a difference. And it and this top manages to be modest yet sexy at the same time for that reason. <laughs> so maybe, maybe if okay, we got just from from the comments that we're getting, and I'm, I'm not going to bring every one of them because we did mm -hmm. cover some of this, but. Um, V-neck, I think a, a tutorial for a V-neck. Yep. I, I, I still think the idea of taking a pattern that you already have that's got a V-neck mm -hmm. or a top that has a V-neck and just simply retracing those lines mm -hmm. would absolutely, absolutely work. Um, yeah. Maybe a, a tutorial for, I'm, 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 I'm getting, getting, giving work, work to you, Joanne. If you want to do it together, we could do it together or do it as a tutorial. Um, bust dart changes, bigger mm -hmm smaller and elimination yeah. we don't have enough time to cover all that today you've covered right. it a little, but that mm -hmm. would be a, that would be a good one um for yeah. the future someone um, else asked me for that recently too and it's in the works a couple weeks i'll have it up on youtube oh great excellent um and xena has a question are there video instructions for your pattern so yes. let's talk about that for a minute there are video instructions for the gorgeous go day top and also my pants the pants pattern that is that is in the production now it's available the secret jeans trousers okay um so not all of them have a video yet. I'm working on that. Um, and what I usually do when I do a video is I do a sew along and it's organized on Facebook um, or or through email uh, or, you know, I know not everybody's a Facebook person, so that's cool too. You can just do it on email. What I recommend everybody do is, I know you don't, no one wants any more email in their life, but it, it's worth it for you to be a member of the Style Falcon flock. And if you go to my website, stylefalcon.net, um, the box will pop up and say, join the flock. Put your email address in there and you will get all the updates. You'll get invitations to the to the sew alongs and it's really fun. Um, and, and I would say you and I have the same mindset. We love to keep in touch with our friends, mm -hmm. but we don't um, show up every day at their house asking if they want to drink some coffee. Yeah. Whether I coffee promise I don't stand to do people. Anything else. I, I <laughs> so everything you get, that. I hope everybody feels everything they get from my end is a value. Everything they mm -hmm. get from your end, I know will be a value. So. Definitely, yeah. I encourage you to, um, uh, you know, definitely sign up. Patty says sure. um, uh, the knit T-shirt she's been making lately all have the gathered bust yeah, area rather than the dart. Yeah, pretty interesting. Yeah. It's a great um, idea, right? Yeah. Um, and Bobby says, is there a way to make the neck opening less wide? For this shirt, you mean? I, 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 I'm assuming she's probably talking about the, the sublime shell. Yeah. Okay. 
yes, you could if you wanted to. Um, let me just show, I'll just hold the pattern piece up again. Again, because this is a raglan, there's the neck is the sleeve plus the front and the back. So here's the neckline. And if you wanted to make it smaller, you you could um, you could take it in, you could kind of cut the pattern open maybe here and, and and fold it a little bit, remove a little of the width there, but you'd you'd want to do that on the front and the back and the sleeve more or less evenly. So maybe just a, a quarter of an inch or a half a centimeter in each of those places because you figure you've got one, two, three, you know, all the way around, you'll end up removing a little bit of width. Um, another thing you could do if you if you wanted to just sort of square it off is you could you could do a little um, on, on the sleeve piece. I'll just hold up the sleeve piece. You could you could manipulate that. Here's the here's the neckline for the sleeve piece. You could you could manipulate that a little bit too. If you just wanted if you wanted it to it to go in a little more just on the side here. And um, I, I want me to throw my two cents in on, on this because yeah. I I I love to change my necklines and especially mm -hmm. if it's a, a a crossover neckline, you know, a, a wrap neckline or a V neckline. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or even some scoops. I, I just, there's a certain place I like to have things on my, on my body. I think a lot mm -hmm. of us are, are like that. And we, you know, we don't want it maybe too, too deep or too, too shallow. So once again, back to trial garment, I recommend you know, go to the, go to the bargain aisle. And if you really, you know, really are, I don't want to, um, you know, feel like you're spending money on very much fabric, buy something ugly and cheap but has the same kind of qualities to the fabric, you know, buy some ugly, cheap chalet oh, yeah. and make it out of that. And there's a lot I, of ugly cheap fabric. Exactly. <laughs> sew, it up. <laughs> sew it up and put it on your body. And then what I do is I take a, I take a piece of paper or pattern tra transfer cloth. I literally tuck it in my neck mm -hmm. and I pin it to the garment. And then I redraw where I want that neckline to be. Then I take it off and that's how much I add to my pattern. So just, it's just, just a really, really simple way of, of doing it. And it's, it really doesn't take much to play around with the different um, necklines. Once you, once you use that kind of a method and then just use that as a, as an extra pattern piece. Sure. That will work. Yeah. Yeah. Patty says yeah. she gets the wide, the, so, you know, and we're all, we all have different, you know, mm -hmm. different areas there. So again, that's the perfect, yeah. um, Perfect way to to test it out is make a trial. Mm -hmm. it. And Carla's been enjoying everything. Great. We got just a, a cool. few more minutes to go. And we did have some questions on sizing. So I'm going to pop mm -hmm. those up. I saved those. So let me pop those up. Um, let's see if I can find them. Oh, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Well, basically, it was it was regarding um, plus sizes. So let's let's go mm -hmm. back. Let's just revisit this. Let's bring up the size chart. Okay. And let's talk about sizing because what does plus size really mean? And, and how do your yeah. <laughs> size range match up with the whole idea of plus sizes? Mm -hmm. Right. Um, well, plus size isn't, isn't very well defined. That's, that's the, the bottom line of, of the situation. I think that um, if, the this the F, which is the, the midpoint of the line, is 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 around a US 14 or so. Okay. Um, so you're you're getting and then you're getting five sizes larger and five sizes smaller from that. Um, so you know it goes up to like a 22 or down to like a six. Um there, but again, because the shaping and the and the cut is very different, it's not really analogous to ready to wear. Um, so I think the best thing you can do is look at this body measurement chart, and then all of my patterns have the finished measurements on them. Um, and that's, it's on the website or it's on the back of the envelope and it has all the, the major finished measurements that you'll know. Someone else asked about bicep. There's extra room in the bicep also, in addition to those other changes that I mentioned for the mature figure, because we tend to get a little extra flesh there, um, as we, as we age. And, and the same is true for the upper knee area, like the area right above your knee for the pants. You'll be glad you have a little extra fabric there too, probably. Yeah, 
there is one one comment that came from a while back, and I didn't didn't bring it up till now. But um, Evelyn says she'd love to make a piece of clothing, but struggles with um, belly and rear issues. <laughs> but again, I think um, you've built a lot of that into your patterns, yeah, so that's, that that's right. already um, a, a solution. The, the secret jeans trousers, just to talk about those them again for a second, because this is kind of my most popular pattern, and this does have a video tutorial with it, has extra room in the belly. So um, if you you can look at the the technical drawings, I think it's a it's a little hard to see maybe, but but you can you can see how the belly kind of goes out a little bit. Yeah, yeah, you can see and, that. And it has elastic in the back, but it's flat in the front. So if you're it's so it's comfortable, you don't need to mess around with the zipper and a button and all that kind of stuff if you don't want to. And it has these inset pockets, these front inset pockets instead of the side inset pockets, so they don't bag open. You know, when you sit and you're walking around, if your if your belly is a little larger than your hips, um, Got and, it. and your stuff never falls out of these pockets either, which is a bonus. Uh, and you can either make a dress trouser like these, or you can make a mock jean, like what's shown over here or the the model here on the on the side. That's great. And and again, you, you know, everybody that's been here today has seen a little taste of a lot of your different patterns. Sure. Should we spring our little surprise on them? Yeah. <laughs> so, so thanks for joining the Style Falcon Flock. You do get um, a coupon. It's just the coupon code is FLOCK <laughs> to save 10% um, off of your total order. And I also, for Joanne, I know some of you are members of the Flock already. I recognize some names. There's also, you can use the coupon code Let's Go So all one word, let's go so, which is, you know, the name of Joanne's show, either with or without the apostrophe works, lowercase, and that will also give you 10% off of your purchase of either the paper or the digital patterns, and, and that runs through Monday night. Thank you, Diane. That is so wonderful. That is absolutely wonderful. <laughs> sure, and the flock discount is anytime. It's it's kind of like for your first purchase. I know maybe if you haven't used it yet, you can try that, or you can save that for any any other time. Very good. Excellent. We really, really appreciate that. Sure, absolutely. Zena had a, a great idea. She says she gets sheets from Goodwill to use for muslin. Oh, yeah. 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 So, especially if they've been washed a few times, they're they're already softened up. They're a little more, a little more garment like for sure. Yeah. Smart move. Very yeah. good. Just well, be sure I you know where the grain line is. That's the main thing. Just you're sure right. You can establish where the grain line is. Yeah. Um, yep. That is important. Right. That is definitely important. Yep. <laughs> Well, I'm sure we all have some ugly fabric in our stash, though, too, right? <laughs> oh, my gosh. Well, there's a sneak peek. This is one thing I promised I would do. This is the pant pattern. Ah. That and this is the ugliest fabric fabric I've ever seen in my life. I mean, what do we think? Is this just the most hideous thing imaginable? But I have to say, <laughs> one person's ugly is another person's beauty. I kind of like it. For, well, I'm like it crazy. It's maybe this pan pattern isn't the right uh, medium for it, but um, anyway, it it was super cheap, and I said, hey, that's great for muslins. And these these are kind of cool pants that they have a um, they have a pocket, an inset uh, like an inset pocket right here. Again, it's up against your body; it doesn't bag out. Your stuff doesn't fall out. And there's a couple of cool designer hem options for right. it um, for the for the bottom. If you can, I can. I'll just throw it over my shoulder. You can see better. Yeah. So this is what the hem is like. It's sort of a modern tulip hem. Oh, how pretty. You know, that's a very um, popular and ready to wear now is yeah. um, so um, a easier to fancy see treatments at the ankles. Yeah. Yeah. It, so it's got that kind of a tulip hem um, with facings <laughs> or uh, a split hem or just a straight hem, depending on what you like. Okay. Jenny's got a question we got to squeeze in and we're going to mm -hmm. be wrapping up here shortly, but um she wants to know the size that fit her measurements are just right, except for the hip. Mm -hmm. So her hip is uh, six inches smaller. So okay. what what would your guideline be? I know what I would say, but I want you. I want to hear what you have to say. It's sure. just going to depend um, on the garment, right? What size you pick? Yeah, I think when you take your measurement, be sure that you're taking not just your standing hip measurement, but also your sitting hip measurement, which is called your spread. There is a little additional room in the hip in my patterns because. I don't know if you have this experience. I sure do. When you sit, you spread a little. Um, so make sure that you have both of those so that you know, um, you really know what's going on in your hip. Most of the garments are sort of straight cut. So like to give you an example of this shirt, it's 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 straight cut along the sides. So you don't need to grade in for the hip. You would just let it drape. 
uh, and that's true for you know this this dress or top. Same thing. It has a lot of my garments have have quite a bit of have a little drape and drama to them. So you don't probably need to grade in for the pant. What I would suggest is cut your hip size, and then you can take you can adjust the the waist size to to measure to to fit your waist if the hip is is the main fit. Wherever the main fit issue is that you want to solve, start there, and then you can grade in and out depending on uh, where you need to go. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. Yeah, it really, it really is um, very easy to accommodate. You just uh, go by those guidelines and you are going to be um, good to go. Well, this has been a ton of fun. You've, yeah. get, you've shared so much information. Um, Dara's got a long, long note here. She's been sewing since um, oh, nice. high school, um, but um, her mom was a professional seamstress mm -hmm. and didn't learn a lot of the tricks from her mom. So she really is appreciative oh. of of all the, all the info, Diane, it's, it's great to, to collaborate with you and, and get your tips and share some thoughts and ideas. Cause that's another great thing about sewing. Mm -hmm. Wendy Lynn says, thanks um, so much. Uh, when there's two together or more um, like there is here with all of our friends, we all bounce ideas off of each other. And we, we, mm -hmm. you know, we share our own tips and tricks and the sewing community is certainly a very giving community yes. and we all love to help each other. <laughs> yes, especially your community, Joanne. I mean, super friendly people and you're just really engaged and having a good time. And, oh, and that's, I love that. it's, it, you know, you've got a, you've got a good crew here. And, and, and so thank you all so much. It's been awesome talking to you today. I could not agree more. This is usually what I have at the beginning, but we're <laughs> getting close to the end. So I can say hello and, and almost goodbye, but I couldn't agree more. The let's go. So family of friends is, uh, uh, just a, a, a real joy in my life. Every time I get to interact with any of them, it's uh, a special, very special time for me. And I appreciate all of you. And I cherish all of your friendships, whether you're uh, near or far, whether you're somebody I get to see in person or somebody I just get to, um, uh, you know, to be with online. I enjoy it. And I enjoy having people like you here, Diane, and being friends with someone like you and and um, just sharing all this uh, sewing goodness together. So mm -hmm. if there's no other um, closing thoughts that you, can you think of anything you'd like to like to close with? Um, I think um, if you're interested in a community, other social communities, the Sew Over 50 group on Instagram is all women over 50 who sew. They are awesome and they're a, an international global group. And I suggest you connect with them if you are an Instagram person. Okay. Yeah. All right. And there's cool. also a podcast that's run by a woman from Australia. And it's it's a it's a really cool community. They have challenges and daily inspiration. And um and they also do a good job of shaming some pattern companies into not thinking about the needs of older sewers. Okay. I will put that into the show notes and of course, uh, <laughs> I'll put your, you know, your website and the mm -hmm. um, discount code. I will put all that in the show notes so everybody could find it there. So again, thank you yeah. all for watching live. Thank you for watching on the replay. Thank you, Diane, for being such a great guest and sharing so much of your, your knowledge with us. Thank you for creating style Falcon patterns <laughs> to share with the world. <laughs> oh, you're welcome. Thanks for having me, Joanne and, and um, crew. You guys are really, really awesome. I'm I'm delighted to have met you all. Thank Thanks you for me. being a sewing friend. <laughs> we'll see sewing you again. Friends are the best friends. <laughs> Absolutely. We'll see you again thank soon. You. <laughs> so again, thank you everyone for being here. Um, I hope you enjoyed the uh, Saturday session. And if you let me know you like this, we will definitely um, do it again. Okay. So until next time, I wish you all a world full of pretty stitches. Happy sewing. Bye-bye.